this person for insurance at this rate because he has a 65% a propensity to die if he's a smoker. So too, I'm going to say, I'm going to not free this prisoner early because I think he's got an X percentage propensity to recommit a crime to come back here if he goes out onto the street early. Right, right, it's true. We have used that same kind of data to price insurance. It's just somehow people feel a little different. Um, and yet you make the point, I just want to read this, instead of a, a using a straight jacket of group identifiers, we've replaced this with much more granular predictions for each individual. Somehow we feel more comfortable just being part of this group, even if it's hurting us, right, right than when we're individuals. Why is that? Well, it's, it's a new thing that we're going to have to face. We've not faced that before. Before we could actually claim partisanship with this group when it benefited us, right? I'm going to succeed at Harvard because I'm, I got admitted because they said that I could succeed at Harvard. And we said, no, I'm, I'm not part of this because just because you said that, you know, people of my height are more likely to be a terrorist, so I get secondary screening at the airport. Um, that doesn't seem fair. It's too blunt an instrument. That's profiling. Right, Leave right, me alone. Right, right. Um, now, what are we? How are we going to make that same claim when we find out actually? No, it's not about that you belong to this group association. It's about you. You're like, well, wait a minute. I'm uncomfortable. So what we do say in the book is that this is a problem, and that the solution we call for a new professional class called the algorithmist. And what the algorithmist is is someone who's experienced and and trained in big data algorithms and data collection and processes who can serve as an intermediary for society between the geeky stuff and our values. So does that mean that in the future, I would kind of know the ground rules whereby I'm being judged? I mean, I don't mind being judged as an individual if I understand how I'm being perceived. And if I'm being perceived negatively, and I wasn't aware of it, then I'm kind of upset. But if I'm aware, oh, if I do this, this, and this, then they think that's so maybe I'll drop one or add this other thing. Steve? Right. But, and, and that I think that I think is the hope. The hope is uh, in, in two ways. The hope is that uh, we uh, accept the fact that people change over time, that people have a capacity to evolve over time. Um, it is the hope that uh, a criminal can become a good citizen. It is the hope that somebody who doesn't pay his mortgage on time eventually will. Uh, if we tell that person, look, your financial score, your financial health score is bad, um, uh, but here are three ways to improve it, uh, then that creates clear incentives uh, toward its improvement. Uh, and that can then shape and uh, advance uh, human behavior. Uh, that will help that individual, but it also helps society because we want individuals to, to be better, to pay their mortgages on time, for example, uh, or to not, uh, not become criminals. And that is uh, centrally important. Exactly. It's, it seems like there's an opportunity here to use this in very positive ways and that we have to be very proactive to do that. Otherwise, people will just assume the worst. And I'm just wondering, what do you see as the role of, of government and public policy in all of this? Because everyone's afraid of Big Brother, and yet the, the, the many of the examples that we used from public health to economy data to, to the manhole covers, right? It's all government related. It's public sector information. And so our governments at every level do have a lot of influence here, and yet we're afraid of them in this area. Any, any thoughts as we, as we wrap this up from that perspective? Well, I think Victor and I both have uh, some thoughts on that. I would simply venture forth and say that the idea of open data is a very good one. We mentioned that in the book, that we're seeing great gains when public authorities are releasing their data to the community so that they can process it and tease out insights that create value. Mm -hmm. And I do think that we need to understand the, 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 the social value of uh, big data. And the social value of big data is not necessarily captured by uh, the, the private sector, by commercial parties. It is captured by smart, intelligent, innovative uh, public sector employees uh, who understand the power of big data and who have the right big data mindset, who go out and do the right thing by taking the data sources that the government has available and uh, exposing, uncovering the hidden value 
for society's benefit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe this will be a continuing journey. I mean, I think we all see all of the positives. I think the challenge will be assuring folks that this kind of information is not being used in a, in a negative way that would be uh, harmful to people and would actually reward them for the wrong kinds of behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that wraps up our FCW executive interview for today. I want to thank Ken and, and Victor for joining me here, and I hope you've enjoyed the program and that we can all be on this journey together to uh, make the best use of this technology and avoid the pitfalls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for your continuing leadership, for sponsoring today's program, and for that very engaging and insightful discussion. And a special thanks to Victor and Ken for your time today as part of your whirlwind East Coast tour. We appreciate you both taking the time to speak to the FCW audience about your new book and findings. If big data is going to transform how we live, work, and think, the sooner we understand the far-reaching implications and opportunities of this rapidly expanding topic, the sooner we'll be able to harness its power to strengthen and improve government services, programs, and outcomes. We look forward to working with you in the future. So that concludes our program for today. Please visit fcw.com for a list of upcoming events and executive interviews planned for 2013. And thank you again for your participation.